Hello there, good evening. My name is Tammy. Welcome to the Tammy Tucky Show. You caught me reading one of my favorite books. Sorry about that. Um, it's really good to see all of you guys again. You know, back in the early 2000s, there was a big renaissance of Disney films that were based off of well-known Disney attractions. You know, we were sailing the high seas with Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, and then we were roaring along with the band in the Country Bear Jamboree. But for Disney fans, the film that was the talk of the town involved a mansion. It just so happened to be haunted. So let's celebrate the 20th anniversary of the underrated 2003 film. This is The Haunted Mansion. Coming soon to theaters. This is the ancestral mansion of the Gracie family. It's a real fixer-upper. With a Victorian ballroom, secret passageways, spacious grounds with room for the whole family, and a mystery that has cursed the house for over 100 years. But no one told the Evers family. Honey, you know they have uh, dead people in the backyard. Dark spirits from the grave come forth. Don't you make no dark spirits come out while I'm sitting there. Wait till I leave before the dark spirits come out. The Haunted Mansion. Okay, I'm really excited. It's Friday the 13th. Let's welcome the cast and crew. So first we have Nathaniel Parker, Master Gracie. Hi there. Hello, hello. Sorry, I you just... Um... <laughs> I made it, yeah, literally just come off stage. I'm still sporting a, a hairdo from the 1940s. Oh, you look fabulous. And, and of course, we have Mona May, who is the costume designer. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, oh. darling. Hello, darling. How lovely so nice, to see you. Nice to see you, darling. And to create the music and tone of the film, Mark Mancina, the composer. Hi, Mark. Mark. Yay. Hey. <laughs> How are you guys? How are you, Nathaniel? I'm very, very well, thank you. Very well. All the better for seeing you guys, I have to say. I, I, I just well, remember us laughing so hard when we were trying to get through the uh, the wedding rehearsal stuff and with Rob and everything. Remember oh, that? <laughs> oh, my God. I, 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 we watched the preview just now when we watched the um, the trailer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, it, Terrence Stamp and I were both asked to audition for the trailer. And, and I'd been out the night before, I think with Eddie's wife and a few others, to somewhere called the White Lotus. Is that right? Would that be in my memory? A, a, a club called the White Lotus? Well, and I think in Rob those clubs. Saying, right, Mom is saying, yes, there's Rob. Minkley oh, Rob! Hello, <laughs> darling man! Uh, <laughs> Screenwriter, there we go. We're all oh, right. David, this is amazing. Everybody's here. Hello, hello. How are you? Hello, very good. I can see you better now. <laughs> ah, perfect. But that trailer. I know that, that that's what I was. I found it today, and I went, "Oh, this is perfect." So that was your voiceover, right? Well, it was because I got the audition number, but, but I, I I didn't realize the night the next morning they were going to be picking me up at like seven in the morning. Uh, six thirty or something, and I turned out like this. And I was going, "I'm really sorry. I don't think I could probably do it today." And they said, "Just, just read it once." So I read it, and that was what we did. <laughs> it sort of worked. <laughs> Good to see you guys. <laughs> oh, can I just play one thing because it, it's reference to the film? So here we go. Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy, 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 happy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> Very good. I remember you filming that. There's, there's a story. Not that. I mean, again, just if we're just going to launch onto tangents. Um, yeah, yeah. That scene. That scene was uh, was was set in a tiki bar, and I've always been a fan of the tiki bar. And so one day I walked into. Uh, uh, I think it was pre-production. We were probably haven't hadn't started shooting yet, and I went up to the production designer, John Meyer. And I said, hey, John, uh, what do you suppose is going to happen with that tiki bar when we're finished shooting? And John said, well, 
funny you ask. As a matter of fact, I've just been thinking about that, and I was actually wondering if I could install it in my home. And I said, oh, really? You want to install it in your home? And he goes, why? Do you want to put it in yours? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. And he goes, well, in that case, I suppose we're going to be installing it in your home. And I said, John, you are the sweetest. Thank you so much. <laughs> so fact, after, they, after they finished shooting, they picked up the whole thing, and they came over to my house, and they built my – they completely transformed my garage into the exact tiki bar that, they, that we had in the film. Yes. I remember I it. I remember, I remember you it. taking it, yeah. I, yeah. I do as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sorry, is my audio sounding a little bit better? Some people in the chat were saying you do not sound clear. Does this sound a little bit better? I think it was a little clear than me before. That's good. I'm so That's sorry good. about that. Uh, the ghosts were just messing with the whole entire <laughs> program. They're in the machine. We get it. We get it. <laughs> So, so I, I, so I always wanted to ask because I never got to interview anybody who did a Disney attraction film. So here's my question: I wanted to ask David and Rob to start us off. Is so you have an attraction? It doesn't really have a clear storyline. You know, a couple stories here and there. So what truly comes first? Does the script come first, or does the director come first? In this case, with an well, attraction. Film? I'm happy to tee up David because in this case, sure. it was the script that came first. So, and David could speak to that. But when I got uh, introduced to the project, it was literally because the head of the studio, Dick Cook, said, I'm sending you over a draft of a script for our newest project called The Haunted Mansion by David Berenbaum. And I don't think I'd met Dave before I started no. reading the script. But then very quickly after that, uh, David and I met. But why don't, David, why don't you tell the actual backstory? Uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely a, a script first. And they came to me with the... Uh, the idea of it, I was in something called the Disney writing program and they came to me and they said, Hey, why don't we do a haunted mansion movie? And I said, uh, that sounds amazing. And cause I was a, a huge fan of the ride and, you know, we tinkered around for a while. Everyone had different ideas of what to do, make it scary, make it funny. You know, everyone has different, uh, ways they want to see it and do it. So we finally came up with a version that we thought worked and that's where we got Don Hahn and Rob involved and we sent it to them and fingers crossed they came on board. And I, and I, and I read the script and you know, one of the things, and this was, it was very tricky and I don't think, I think when people see the film, you know, they, they don't recognize or notice this because we, we sort of made some changes in the original, uh, in the original version um, but when, when I heard that they, the, the studio wanted to cast Eddie Murphy in the lead role, suddenly there was a kind of a question about how the story was going to, um, land in terms of the fact that his wife was from, you know, was reincarnated from an earlier era. And in the original conception of the, the, the script, the villain was Master Gracie, right? He was the evil villain. Right. Yeah. And we did, we did not like, well, we didn't like him in that first draft intentionally. He was like, uh, he was really a bad guy. And he was sort of, I would describe him as lusting after Jim Ever's wife in a way that was very sordid and, and unseemly. And I remember <laughs> reading that going, Jesus, you know, if he's, you know, he's a white guy and she's black and it's kind of feels <laughs> icky. This there's something yeah. about this that concerns yeah. me. If we just go there, it, it could really. I mean, it's going to bring up potentially a lot of very painful and uncomfortable realities about how things were in in America at that time, because it was obviously from a very much earlier era. And so I kind of came in and I said, maybe we should look at this love story differently, and maybe Master Gracie shouldn't be qu quite as bad as he is in the script so that maybe we could say that their love story was really a, a, a good story, right? That they really loved each other, even though it was mixed race love. And, you know, that was the thing that they were fighting against at the time. But, you know, in the world that we're in today, of course, we would say, well, there's, uh, you know, th th there's nothing wrong with that. And so, so that's kind of the reality. So we shifted that. And that, and that's really where the, 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 the Butler character where right. Terry Stamp's character sort of cleaved off and he sort of became the repository for all the, the bad men <laughs> people in the film because Correct. in a sense he was representing that sort of retro 
negative attitude towards this mixed race couple. That's kind of how we shifted it. Um, and then, and then we, you know, that's when we hired Nathaniel. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah, we, was he, wasn't, a, he wasn't the baddie that, uh, you know, he wasn't, wasn't quite as bad, bad as it seemed. No, <laughs> no, well, let's jump, not let's at jump all. to Nathaniel because the casting, how, how was the casting process for you for this particular role? Like, did you have additional details besides it was the haunted mansion as to what your character no. was going to be? No, we had, there's a sort of um, weird thing that goes on with auditions transatlantically, which is you get sent two or three pages, you put yourself on tape, and that's it, you leave it. And there was a, I remember the audition, though. I remember going to the audition, though, and nowadays you just do it at home. But then you, we went to a place, and the lady was really helpful and really lovely who, who, who cast. And, um, and I just forgot about it, to be honest. I just completely forgot about it. I, I never think I'm going to get an audition. I always just go, no, forget it. Once I've done it, put it aside, move on to the next thing. Uh, and then when I got the call, I was, I have to say, I was bouncing off the walls. I was so happy. Um, uh, because it just it just seemed like, what a great thing to do. I, I, a Disney ride picture, fantastic. And, and it really did. I mean, it sort of changed my life. Um, in I don't know about my career as such, but it changed my life. I met Rob, I met Mona, I met these guys who just created the most extraordinary bubble that I'd never come across before. <laughs> and, you know, I, I was actually talking about Rob to somebody to earlier today about an influence that, you know, we've become very good mates over the years. And uh, and if it hadn't been for Rob, I, I might not have done a couple of things I've done in my life. So, yeah, it changed my life. It made me, I was just genuinely thrilled. Um, and the idea of working with Eddie Murphy, I remember, do you remember the first take we did? With Eddie and me, and I stood there. It's, it's when they introduce each other. I remember the first other. day. Uh, yeah, and, and I just fell about laughing. I just he, he said hello to me. And I just went, "Oh, so sorry, I can't believe Eddie Murphy," <laughs> which I think, which I think actually did engender me to Eddie a little bit. I think he rather liked that. Okay. <laughs> um, but. Because I was, I was just blow, blown away, blown away. Um, yeah, but there were so many different aspects to it. You know, Mona's Mona's influence on me, um, and uh, and um, when we were there shooting with the kid, my kids came to see some of it and fell in love with her and the costumes. And I've got all these pictures still at home of, oh. of Mona dressing the kids up. And um, yeah, it was brilliant. Those so costumes were so clever, weren't they, with the glass in them and everything, making them ah oh, phenomenal. Thank you. So brilliant. And, and Mona, yeah. you, you, so how did you join into the project? Well, I was lucky enough to know Rob. We, we've done a couple of movies before and had a shorthand. So that was uh, super great to be able to jump on something like that. You know, I mean, Disney and reinventing these characters and, and giving them a fresh spin was super cool. And, you know, having a shorthand with, with Rob is, is, was amazing. And it was such a challenge because it was a, not only a movie in a dark house, uh, you know, we had all the different ghosts and mortal mortal characters, ghosts, the graveyard. I mean, there was a lot going on with the question. Should have won the Oscar. <laughs> Just saying, should have won the Oscar. Rob, Just saying. Rob. Just saying. Rob should have won the Oscar. I'm, I'm so with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were so inventive and different and, uh, and, and new. Amanda, you were amazing. You were amazing. Thank you. Never known anybody like it. Thank you. Look at there you go. That's perfect. <laughs> I have to say, Mona, you haven't aged a day. No, look at that. That is silly. You look great. Have you got a filter on? Have you got a filter on there or something? You're cheating. No, no filter, no cheating. <laughs> By the way, I am drinking white wine just to let you know. This is me actually drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when, when you're looking at the Same. sketches you can really see you know it was super classic i think it really was like the quintessential made you know from the scary movies and again working with the textures you know remy uh adversary and rdp you know we had to work very closely on what can we see in the dark environment you know so there had to be a lot of textures to everything you can see the little dots in the in the corner of the sketch so there was always kind of a three-dimensional feeling to everything otherwise we would you know if i use just the black velvet and i think that the coolest part was what what rob wanted to do is to make sure that these characters when we meet them we don't know that they are ghosts they're just regular mortars uh you know nathaniel's uh, character uh, master edward gracie you know just looked like an eccentric guy that you know lived in this mansion you yeah. know maybe maybe a musician something cool so even though the clothes were period you couldn't really tell and uh, we were able to kind of blend the different worlds together 
till you kind of later know what's happening and you know we meet all the other crazy characters i mean wally sean and you know all this I, I had to dress everybody i mean even the skeletons with ripped clothes and the skeletons are amazing you could see them when they were hanging around backstage and they'd be eating <laughs> like if they had a banana you see the banana go in and then you, where 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 does it go <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it, was, it was really quite it was bizarre yeah, I mean, it, it was just amazing. I mean, the lavish masquerades that we were able to, you know, create. I mean, Rob, that was just so much fun that we were just playing. I mean, it was 18th century. It was before, I mean, New Orleans, everybody lived there. It was such a melting pot. And again, the texture was just so important to the film. And the, the kind of the, as I work with you, Rob, I always feel like we create such a great color palette for all the films. I mean, Stuart Little had another color palette and this had such a beautiful, rich color palette, you know, working closely with John Meyer, our production designer as well. Uh, it was amazing how we were able to kind of give depth to the film and it didn't feel just like a ride. I mean, it felt so gorgeous and lavish. And and here here's uh, Nathaniel's costume. Yes. Oh, oh yeah, I, I love dressing you. <laughs> Thank you. Do you, remember, do you remember when we had we had trouble getting the right cut, didn't we? And I had a jacket. Yes. I, I I had a coat of my own, sort of dress coat, yeah. um, of of the of the right sort of shape. And you borrowed it, and you were yes. so sweet because then you said to me, "Why didn't you go and get yourself a suit a, a suit as a present?" I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I, I just I was so chuffed. I was. <laughs> I've so still well, got yeah. the suit upstairs. Actually, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I still wear the I still wear the black uh, velvet one. Oh, oh, the velvet one! I love oh. the velvet. Oh, yeah. that's so <laughs> I can't I apparate anymore. I'm having anything. trouble apparating these days. I don't know <laughs> if, if that's to do with the suit or what. But, you know, you can't have everything. Well, here's a here's a little behind the scenes <laughs> clip of uh, of some of the makeup with Rick Baker and also with Mona. Here we go. Rick that were layered with three or four different fabrics like gauze or silk and then completely shredded to nothing. I wanted them to be very wispy and thin and, and, and but I, I felt that we needed to do them because we needed to hide the person inside of it and, and it just expose the bones where we wanted them to be exposed. It's just, it takes a long time for each pass because we have to get the lights reflecting perfectly and make sure there's enough edge light and that they're locked onto the ground, the costumes look perfect, that each prop they're holding has enough reflectivity. So there's a, a lot of detail and care that really goes into every ghost. Well, I wanted to stay true to the feeling of the ride because I'm a big fan of the ride. This is very much the drawing that Mark Davis did. It was the person who was actually the person that's hanging in the in the haunted mansion. That's what I based this on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's brilliant oh, okay. <laughs> it's such an amazing collaboration of all the artists and rob you really picked all of us so uniquely i mean this was the most fun truly to have all the different yeah, people really. bringing yeah good job rob <laughs> you know, yeah. thank you yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you and, and, well you know I, yeah. I come i come from the school of it's it's always better to uh, to you know, to work with people that are better than you. So that's uh, that's the. <laughs> My dad always used to say, Hi, it, 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 delegate to people who know more than you. Just don't ask Fred Astaire his opinion on nuclear physics, and don't ask a nuclear physicist to dance." But you know. <laughs> <laughs> And it's so funny because this time last year I was in Disneyland and I'm walking down the downtown Disney, and I start hearing this. If it will play. Hold on, let me try it again. There we go. So, so Mark, what do you think about having your score is still playing in the Disney theme parks twenty years later? I, w I wish they pay me royalties. But I, I know uh, he, <laughs> Mark has got a few of those uh, playing at Disney theme parks. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that theme. I I, um, I remember uh, I remember writing that. <clears throat> I wrote about three of them, and and Rob came in, and the first two he was like not memorable. <laughs> <laughs> which was probably which was probably right uh but that one was really good and and i think he liked that one and, and we went with that and it modulates itself and it, it does all sorts of cool things that i like a lot so 
But I, you know, I didn't, I didn't get a tiki room and I didn't get a suit. I didn't get things oh, like that, unfortunately. You get a suit? No, you, you get yourself yeah. playing at Disneyland in 2023. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's that's that's, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> to be along with that. Also, you know, we had, you know, we had the, the, the uh, themes from the Haunted Mansion, which are awesome. You know, those are great, great themes. So I was able to kind of feed those in every once in a while when we thought it was appropriate to kind of all of a sudden make a turn and go into one of those beautiful uh, original Haunted Mansion themes. So, and, 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 and Rob was amazing because for me, he gave me, I, I had everything I needed. I, we had a full choir. We had a full orchestra. We recorded at yes. Sony, which is the best. Uh, it was... Um, pipe organ harpsichord you know we didn't we didn't have to worry about oh you know you need to cut three trumpets off of the the last piece or whatever it was uh really afforded me to have what i needed to kind of create that big of a score because it was such a delicious looking movie i mean when you i would look at the the footage and it was like it was so gorgeous that i really wanted to wrap the score around it and, and you know, not take away from it, but make it make it richer if I could, you know. So, so you were watching the biggest... while composing it. I'm sorry. I was just saying, were you were you watching dailies while also composing the music? Well, actually, you know what was really cool is that Don brought me down to the set, so I walked around that set, which was incredible. I mean, it was absolutely oh. incredible, um, <laughs> and the costumes, you know, everything. It was just kind of like holy mackerel! I, I know. So I I went. Yeah, right? Oh, that so room. So beautiful. <laughs> oh. I want to live wow. there. Um, yeah, it was incredible. In just incredible. Right. We saw them building it too, didn't we? I mean, Absolutely. It came out of it. It was just a big warehouse, and we saw them building it. That staircase, that's the, oh, my God, that thing's like that. Yeah, hey, the hey, outside hey. of the building and the inside couldn't be more different, by the way. No. No. <laughs> no. Right? no. Yeah, it was incredible. <laughs> And you know, to, wow. to create a score around that is is a gift. Um, I, I've always felt during that movie that I it must have been a really hard movie to make, but it wasn't a hard movie for me to score. It was big, it was a lot, but it wasn't you know it wasn't hard. But it, it felt like it must have been really hard for you guys because there was so much production to it and special effects and the lighting and I mean all that stuff is amazing. Yeah, the set was it the biggest John movie Meyer. that you had all worked on? I'm interested to know. Was it the biggest movie we'd all worked on by that point? Uh, uh, I don't Rob know. Rob did The Lion King. <laughs> yeah, that was that did fairly well. Uh, no, but yeah. I mean, I, 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 I don't mean, you mean I, in, I mean, in terms of production? Yeah, in terms of production. You know, uh, yes, uh, to some extent. Um, Yes, I mean it was it was it was a lot. We built a lot. You know, we we yeah. got the chance yeah. to do that, which was amazing. Um, yeah. And, uh, but it was, yeah, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot of a lot. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things happening at all times. A lot of and, things happening. Uh, John Meyer. I just like this uh, photo shoot you did, by the way. <laughs> oh, look at Great. that. Go Very Rob. Cool. <laughs> Fabulous. Very cool. Beautiful. Rob, you haven't Beautiful. aged at all either. Oh, gosh. Thank I mean, you. that is that is really kind of spooky. I think maybe... That's, you, in, his, that's in his bedroom now. So, yes. You know, it's really <laughs> Good one. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's important. It's, and the, and the, all the gravestones, are all, they're all there. <laughs> oh, look at that. There, and I still own that, oh. uh, that, that cap, that Russian cap. It's still in my oh, closet. Yeah. Right. Um, it was, you know, it was, it was... I mean, there were many different kinds of challenges on the film. Obviously, you know... Um, one of the things, one of the smartest things that I did on the film was to hire uh, the first AD that had worked on several movies with Eddie. Yes. And, and I remember before we started shooting, and the reason I hired him is because, you know, he, he, he led the interview. I was like, well, what's it like to work with Eddie? And he was like, well, there's some rules. I'm like, whoa, yeah. well, what, are, what are the rules? And he, and he told me everything that was, had to be done and it was like, you've got to do this and this and this and or else you, you know, you could get into trouble with Eddie. And so I was like, no, no, I, I don't want to get in trouble with Eddie. I want to make sure that we're doing this exactly according to whatever it is we need to do. And it was a whole it was a whole thing, because one, one of the things that he explained was that Eddie insisted on removing his costume between takes. Eddie, you know, it's very important to him to look crisp and fresh 
when he's on camera, so he doesn't want to be lounging around in his in his costume. And so when he, we were finished with Eddie, he would go back to his trailer and literally take off some elements. I mean, I don't know if it was just the jacket and the pants, but it was a fair amount. Yeah. And uh, and then event and then eventually, when you were ready to shoot, uh, the first AD would say, "You cannot invite Eddie to the set until you are ready to go." And and we had a a, a, a photo double that worked on on many movies with Eddie, who you could honestly from from the from behind you couldn't tell uh, it, he wasn't Eddie. And and so we were also told that on on many shots. Uh, Eddie would prefer us to use his photo double from behind, you know, over the shoulder. Um, but what was amazing is I think after a while shooting the film, because, you know, I think we created a, a, a very positive environment, uh, one that he felt comfortable in and one that, you know, I think certainly he understood that we really respected him and, and wanted to make sure to, you know, to get the most out of him and to treat him well. Um, but then he actually started showing up to do those uh, those shots over the shoulder and would occasionally read off camera with the other actors, which was something he most frequently he did, did not do. He did that with me. He, he never yeah. once let his double work with me. He always did the shots, as I remember. He always worked with me. And um, I was lucky. I, I think with Terence, he, he, he didn't initially, but as you say, later on. But I, he, he was very sweet to me, actually, and always did that. Um, but... He, he also didn't rehearse, do you remember? He wouldn't no. rehearse it. So, so we, we, we would go through stuff and, uh, and he'd just turn up at the final camera rehearsal and then go, right, and he'd nail it. I mean, that was kind of frustrating from my point of view. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you right. want to go, I want to work with him because rehearsal is often the most fun part of the job. Yeah. But he could pick things up so damn quickly. <laughs> you yeah. know, um, well, it's kind of, it, you know, it's an interesting thing because, you know, first of all, he's been doing this for such a long time and, you know, he, he's really the consummate professional. But, you know, comedy, it's like, it's like, I think it's like jazz, right? It, it's going to come out the way it comes out when it comes out. So he doesn't yeah. want to, He's not going to put, he's not going to waste a performance that isn't rolling, you know, that he, you're not going to capture on camera. And he literally can just, he kind of just winds up and just goes. And it's yeah. like, you don't know what you're going to, and, and he puts so much energy into his performance, you know, that it's really striking and remarkable, you know, and then, uh, and, and it's always so good. One of, one of the great moments that I had was sometime later, maybe a, a few years actually later i happened to be having lunch at a restaurant in beverly hills called mr chow it's a somewhat well-known restaurant and i was sitting on the opposite side of the restaurant from eddie who i think was having lunch with his agent and at one point i he i caught his eye he looked over and he saw me and i wasn't sure what he was going to do but he stood up and he walked across the restaurant and he gave me a big hug Oh, oh, good. Yeah. That's nice to hear. Very nice. nice. That's nice. To hear. And Mona, I bet you were very happy that he didn't make his costumes uh, <laughs> crinkly. Although I remember going in and seeing 35 suits exactly oh the fucking same. Sorry, <laughs> exactly the same. Well, and, and so they're always crisp. But I used to, I don't know if you remember this, Rob, but I, I used to hang out in between takes for me in my full costume in the office answering phones. I mean, that's what I, I, I like to be in my costume, hanging around, wouldn't I? You, know, you would be in my in my world. So, completely Rob, opposite. Rob, Rob, could you lower your volume just a little bit? Your volume's just peaking just a little bit, if you don't mind. I just Not want to make sure you're the best sounding. Oh, by the way, so when you say like the character acting from Eddie, I just had to share this photo of Eddie and Dina, which is just another reason I really love this film is sometimes you don't even need words to express what you're feeling. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. D Dina and, um, and, and Sean were just incredible, weren't they? They were just brilliant, those two. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Is that better? Do I, am I not... Uh... It's perfect. Like, not crackling. Perfect. Okay. perfect. There you go. Yeah. I just feel sometimes this film gets a lot of flack because first of all, you had, I think Pirates came out in the summer. And then you guys yep. followed suit in November. You didn't even get to have a Halloween release because of Pirates. And uh, Country Bears, I think, kind of came out later after that. I have no idea. But I feel like because Pirates did so well and people were just 
I don't know. I don't know what the standard is, but then again, I, I was, I remember um, just as a kid, I really loved the film and I remember they marketed all over the place to the point where it was like, it was at the theme parks. It was at McDonald's. So, you know, it was such a, for me as a kid to experience the film, I really enjoyed it. So I never understood the flack it got. Did, did you ever hear from people just saying maybe Disney fans came up and said why they didn't like it? Well, I think I know why. I mean, first of all, I think there was, there is now a generation of kids that either did, you know, may not have seen the movie on its initial release, but watched the movie later, you know, on television or streaming or, or other places. And, and like you said, they didn't have the same uh, impression, but I would say, you know, I think what David uh, said earlier was there was a question about what the tone of the film would be. Was it going to be a comedy? Was it going to be a scary movie? And I think what we ended up attempting was to do a bit of both, which mm -hmm. sometimes that is in of itself the problem because the people that really want it to be scary are disappointed because it's funny. And the people that really want it to be funny are disappointed because it's too scary. So you've sort of, you've sort of, found yourself in as a in the middle somehow um right. and I, I kind of think that is whereas i think kids can kind of take it at face value you know they're going to appreciate it and i think also kids because it wasn't that scary right it wasn't like extremely well, scary scene. Well, the <laughs> know, scene is kind of me. scary <laughs> well it's pretty scary but i mean but again it was like <laughs> so it was it was sort of the 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 the, the scariness was more kind of geared towards kids than it was to an older audience. So, yeah. and I think generally speaking, and I think honestly pirates got it right, right? They, they, they aimed at a, I think an older audience and they didn't have, and the, and the tone actually, that was one of the interesting things I remember hearing at the time, this was before pirates came out. I was talking to one of the Disney executives and they said, uh, you know, how, you know, I asked how Johnny Depp was and they're like, we, we're not sure. They're like, he, it's like, <laughs> He, he, he came, we think he was like drunk on the set and we're not sure what he was doing. And p people were in a panic about it because they were like, I just don't, can't, I don't understand what he's doing. And they were terrified it was going to, it was going to fail. But the truth is the comedy of that film is all on Johnny Depp and he does a brilliant job, but totally unexpected. He's not, he's not anything like you would think. And as, and the reason he's created such an indelible character with Jack Sparrow is because it's like, it, it, it's, it's a one of a kind thing, right? Eddie Murphy, on the other hand, is Eddie Murphy. And we've seen Eddie Murphy in many, many different films, right? No one is surprised by Eddie Murphy in this film. And again, even that is, if you're a fan of Eddie Murphy, great. And maybe if you're not so much a fan, that's not good either. So, so I think we were challenged by some of those elements. Yeah, totally. It was definitely walking a line. You know, everyone had their conceptions of what they, even when they were building the ride, people said, oh, I want it to be scary. I wanted funny and Walt sort of like said, well, you know, let's put this on, on ice for a while and figure it out later. And when we were doing the script, it was constantly evolving. It was constantly moving. And, you know, once you knew the, the people who were involved, you know, it became, you know, an Eddie Murphy movie with ghosts and also like sort of a haunted romance. And we were sort of melding the two as we went along and you know, sort of finding it as we went, and uh, and I, yeah. I have to say, actually, because I think this was one of the the things in the original script, when you could hate the villain, the way David originally conceived of him as a character, when you could hate him and feel that he was really working in opposition to uh, uh, Jim Evers' character, and he was trying to steal his wife in this kind of that that as a way uh, to to sort of relate to it on an emotional level was a, was also a lot clearer we complicated yeah. it by by shifting that to kind of more of a pure love story so it was it was a lot of complicated things i think that we ended up with for you know for reason for reasons that i think are understandable uh certainly yeah. and, and and it could have gone you know i would have i would feel much worse about it had we gone that way and then ended up offending people because of the, 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 yeah. because of that, because of the sort of the, the, yeah. the uncomfortable sort of racial issues that would have, might right. have been brought up. Like that would have been far worse, especially no, no, in a no, Disney no. movie. This is, this is very clear. If you're a racist, 
then at the end of the day, there's a fire dragon that's going to come out of your fireplace <laughs> and drag you to hell. It's very simple. So kids learn that, you know? <laughs> I, and and uh, Nathaniel, you'll be thrilled because I think uh, Tumblr and Twitter, there's this whole, you know, Disney fandom, and uh, I'm just proud to be one of them. But a lot of people around the Halloween season when this film is, you know, being shared, these photos seem to tend to circulate all the time. Because... You know, yeah. <laughs> I think everybody know. Well, the girls, us girls, we just, I, I don't know, just watching the movie again, I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, I, and you know, Eddie Murphy is so charming, but I'm like, I don't know. I think I really like Master Gracie. I'm maybe probably a little bit more. Do you know, I'm, oh just, my God. I'm, doing, a, I'm doing a play today, uh, this evening, and, and I just got two fan mails through today, arriving on my dressing table of this picture on the right. So, it is still resonating. Wow. <laughs> that is so wow. weird, isn't it? It is so weird. Oh, um, Matt, ladies love Master Gracie. They love love him. He's he's yeah. an old school I, I, romantic. I say, they tell me, I've never heard of Tumblr. I don't know what that means. I'm, never, I'm presuming it's a social media thing. I've, I've never heard of it. Like um. a blog place with photos and things. But that would have been cool if they actually had, because when Pirates came out, they had, you know, Barbosa and Jack Sparrow meeting and greeting. I would have loved a Master Gre Gracie meet and greet at the parks. I think that would have oh. been great. Well, oh. you know, I would. And, and, you know and, and you some know of those conventions. Yeah, I'd have loved to have done by the that. Way, by the way, it can still happen because I. <laughs> It's not too late. I am it's told, not too late. I am told that Johnny Depp on occasion shows up at Disneyland in full Jack Sparrow regalia. No. Unannounced, really? unpaid. He just will show up. <laughs> Never know. Let's get the yeah. costume back. So, Let's get that so, costume back. Let's Daniel, good. I think next time you're in LA, Nathaniel. Just, Let's just go to Disneyland. You dress Wouldn't up. Wouldn't that be a gas? I might need a yes. bit of a hairdo. I mean, this is this, this is greased down, obviously, for playing a night. I'm playing a Nazi uh, scientist, so hence the look. <laughs> but so I, I might need a bit of juicing up here. But I'd love to. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. I would love it, Disney. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I can. No, watch I, did, I did have the. I can walk behind you with the keyboard and I can play the theme. <laughs> That'll be great. I think we'd need you in front just to warn people. <laughs> uh. And and wouldn't that be cool? Because I, Mona, I think the other thing the girls like was the wedding <sighs> dress. Like yeah. this oh. wedding dress. I, I would right. love, if I got married, I would oh. absolutely wear this wedding dress. <laughs> so tell me about designing this. Well, the, the most fun I think about this film was that I was not con confined to any period, really, because we were kind of playing with ghosts and we could do 1880s. I mean, it really was anything goes. So this was inspired by Josephine, Napoleon's. And it, again, I could have fun because it, it didn't have to be a, a museum piece, you know, so something really that had to work and be romantic and be beautiful and it had to fly. So the, the design also came that we could pick her up and as a ghost, she could fly and all the beautiful veil and the dress could you know, be incredibly beautiful as we were filming it. So, and Master Gracie always loved girls that they were so incredibly beautiful and feminine. I think, you know, that was so beautiful of this film. I think he was so dapper. Everybody in the film had, you know, something that was super cool, no matter what period you were dressing. I mean, we had the contemporary family, you know, Eddie in the suits and, and the mom and the kids. And then we had the ghosts, we had the uh, skeleton. So it was just so much going on. And I think it was a certain kind of, and, and Rob, that's something that I love when I work with you, you know, it's a, it's a certain level of kind of taste and fashion and, and blending different things. I mean, you know, same when we did Stuart Little, we, we created a world, you know, it was almost like 1940s, it was a timeless. So there was something about timelessness to this. When you, I think, watching this film now, you can't really pinpoint it, you know, when was this film made? And that's that's what's so cool about it. And I'm I'm super proud of that film and kind of all the amount of design that I had to create, you know, sketch and make. And I mean, you know, Nathaniel, all our fittings. I mean, it was just so beautiful this this experience. Oh my god! And your your yeah. your team, your team was yeah. endless. Yeah. It was just fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, actually, I do remember a, a moment in in your um, room when Rob, your um, mentor, arrived, Mr. Dumbo. Wait, Do you remember who, that the guy? 
the guy who who, who directed Dumbo. It wasn't Dumbo. That? No, it wasn't it Dumbo. It, 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 it was one of the old. I mean, he was about 150. This guy. Well, it was probably. <laughs> it could have been. It could have been. And it was uh, in Chuck Mona's Joe. room. It could have been it Chuck was in Jones. Mona's room. Oh my God! Chuck. Chuck Jones was there. I missed Chuck Jones. I think you might have I, missed Chuck Jones, but I don't. Well, you know what's funny? I don't remember that. So uh, I do. I do. Well, and it was, I was surrounded was by all Mona's costumes. It was probably. It was. It was. It must have been. It must have been Chuck. Well, Rob, Is that you your, was he William? your mentor? He, yes. But when did yeah? So what? What year did do we we shot this in two thousand and two? Twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and it came out in two thousand three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I I actually met my wife during the making of this film. I know. Um, I know. And and Just... and Nathaniel was actually there. He was present. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I'll tell this, oh, this right. kid, blame the story. I'll blame him. So what <laughs> happened was it was on a, it was on May tenth twenty. Oh three, right? Very good to remember these things. Very May tenth, twenty oh three, and uh, it was a Saturday night. And a friend of mine had called and asked if he could have his sixtieth birthday party again. This was twenty years ago, um, at my office, which was above Sweet Lady Jane Bakery in in uh, uh, West Hollywood, right on Melrose. And we had the second floor with a beautiful balcony overlooking the street. And I said, of course. So he had his party and I was there at the beginning. And then I had to leave, I think, to, to go meet Nat somewhere at a different party. And then when we were, you know, it was getting on in the evening and I said, you know what? I think I need to go back to my office just to make sure they haven't, you know, burned it down. <laughs> and so we, the two of us went back and surprisingly, I thought it'd be kind of raging on, but it wasn't. They were actually quieting it down. They were really cleaning up. And at that moment, three women came, entered uh, one, one of whom I knew at the time and two other girls, one of whom is, is my wife. Um, and we all ended up in my office. We had a couple of couches and a, and a little baby grand piano. And I was sitting at the piano with some Frank Sinatra music. And, and my wife, name is Crystal, came over and said, do you mind if I sit down? And I looked up at her and I was like, oh my God, she's beautiful. I said, of course you could sit down. And so she sat down and we got to talking about travel and she had traveled to more places in the world than I had at that point. And she did ask me, she said, what's the one place in the world you'd rather travel more than anywhere else? And I said, Africa, because even though I made the Lion King, I missed out on the Africa trip. So I said, Africa is my number one. And she goes, that's my number one. She goes, what's your number two? And I said, India. She goes, that's my number two. And I said, well, <laughs> I said, maybe we should go together. And she said, maybe we should. Wow. Oh, wow. 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 She made a big line for you, buddy. <laughs> and, then I, and, then, and then I said, can I have your uh, number? And she gave me her phone number. And uh, we, we ended up going to Africa and India on our honeymoon. There you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Score, 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 score. Score, score, yeah. Tick, tick, tick. Cue, cue the harp. Cue the harp. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, Mark. You should have been doing something under that. I, was, I almost started. Yeah. I almost started. Uh, <laughs> and I, w I wasn't singing some bad Sinatra in the background, was I? I you could have been, but I remember you, you, were, you, were, you, were, you were you were getting on with all the rest of the the. the, the no, no. The, <laughs> you were talking to them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't. Um, <laughs> may I share a couple of quick stories? Yes. Yes. Um, so one concerns Mona. Um, I was I was going to make sure that I uh, said hello to Mona and how much I appreciated her work because the, the everything was so gorgeous. If you look at the picture of her at the premiere, she's wearing this outfit that is absolutely stunning. And I mean, I walked towards her to say something and I immediately <laughs> turned left. Yes. Oh. I, I immediately turned left and went like another place because I was like, I can't do it. I can't talk to him. You know? oh, so, oh. Darling, so, thank you. You, thank you, you, you still look beautiful, by the way, but that was thank a stunning you. outfit. Um, the, the other thing was, so we were recording, we were overdubbing the quartet, the singing, uh, the, um, uh, the, the singing uh, bus, the barbershop quartet. Oh, okay. Dapper dance. The, the four yeah. guys. And I just, and I'm over, they're overdubbing, they're in the studio. And I just mentioned to Rob and Don that I don't like barbershop quartet music, personally. Personally, I just don't like it, okay? Mistake. Uh, because <laughs> later that day, I had to go to the bathroom and I went in the stall and I sat down and I started to do my business. 
And all of a sudden, these guys broke into saw right around my saw. <laughs> big, and I, I jumped, I jumped straight out of the. <laughs> and of course, when I when I came out of the bathroom door, Don and, and Rob were just hunched over laughing, you know, because they set it up, you know. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, my God. That's my story. There you go. There you That's go. A very good story, Mark. Very good. So oh, yeah, there you go. That's it. But do you remember, guys, do you remember the, the things? I mean, I have so many happy memories from that. Yeah. So many happy memories. Yeah. Not, and, and, and some of them were just like the fun things on a Friday night. We'd have fabulous um, parties, you know, wouldn't we? We'd, we'd have, the, we'd have a, 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 a lottery and um, we'd have treats and presents and a, a bar would be there. But also um, on um, working, actually doing the work. I'd never worked like that. So Rob, who is used to doing drawings and going, um, so there's this drawing and then you put this drawing on top of it and this drawing on top of that and then this drawing on top of that. I'd never worked like that. I'd never worked. I mean, I'm, I'm an instinctive kind of guy. And he'd say, okay, well, let's try this. And so we do this. He said, great, okay, now let's try this with this. And then let's try this with this. So we'd end up doing 10, 15 tanks. I'm, I pride myself. I'm the one take man. No, this was 15 takes because he would put something new on each time. And I learned so much by doing that. I mean, that, that was a proper new experience for me. Um, it, was, it was great to do that. It, it's something I'd never come across. The intensity that you do. Do you remember when, when the scene when I had to clear the table and I was cross and I'd never had, I've, I mean, I said, this is so exciting. I've never cleared a table before. I'm really looking forward to this. Please. And I did it 15 fucking times. <laughs> 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 and I don't think it's because I was getting it wrong. Well, maybe I was. Um, but I think it was just because Rob did something more and different each time. And it was, and he had the time to do it and he had the money to do it. And it was beautiful. It was really exciting. We, we have a lot of people watching live and they've been commenting along and I, oh, not that I've tried to ignore them. We've just been having edit so my language. much fun. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. No, no, that's fine. Okay. We're having fun. Um, that's a treat to have Master Gracie curse. I don't mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, person, one person says even hell doesn't tolerate racism. Yes. True. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Very good. Exactly. Sammy, Sammy, says, <laughs> Sammy says Mark's original themes for the film have been bouncing around in her head for 20 years now. Me too. Quite right. Yes. Well done, Sammy. Right. Oscar right. says, a message to Rob. Nice to meet you. Lion King's my favorite Disney animated film. Happy Disney 100. <laughs> wow. yeah. That's right. Uh, well, we have a question from Steven. He says, how much fun was Jennifer Tilly to work with? And what an ideal cast. <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> Yeah. She was amazing, wasn't she? Oh my god, she that's great. really good. That's a pretty good uh, that is I really love good. Her. That's that's really good. <laughs> wow. That's that's scary. It's really good. Eerie, yeah, so this this was, she, uh, she gave her head, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. her, her head, I said, that was very clear. No, I said <laughs> that very clearly. This is a Disney oh, podcast. Disney on. podcast, come on. <laughs> but she gave her head. Oh okay, how else do I say that? Um, <laughs> She was so funny every time she hit it. She was Absolutely amazing. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. So this was this was actually the second time I, I, I got to work with her. She was in the, the original Stuart Little playing uh, one of the two m m mice, the, the couple that come to take Stuart away, pretending oh, that oh, they're cool. his uh, real parents. So I'm I'm such a big Jennifer Tilly fan. I mean, I've loved her from the very first time I saw her in a film. So I, I it, there was no question. And it's interesting because I've gotten to know her, or I've I've actually got to spend some time with her lately because of my crazy connection to the uh, the, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which of course my my wife is on, and uh, and Sutton, one of the uh, one of uh, Crystal's friends on the show, her best friend is Jennifer Tilly. So Jennifer oh, wow. is quite often coming to events that I'm going to as well. And so we've got to spend a fair amount of time together lately. And one of the, one of the, one of the best compliments, or she says, you know what, Rob, I am so thankful that you didn't make me audition. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't, you don't have well to done. have Jennifer Tilly audition, 
right? Because no, she's never. Jennifer Tilly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely no right. Absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, well, the, absolutely. the filmmaking and fandom station says, could you please ask Rob, Nathaniel, and David about Ramsley's deleted scenes? Terrence Stamp said he was disappointed that a lot of them were gone. I did not hear about this, but I'm sure things get cut at the cutting room floor. But what type of deleted scenes yeah, were removed? Well, Do you remember? Yeah, there, I think there was a lot of um, scenes that were rewritten for him. And maybe that's what he's referring to. I don't know any scenes that were shot that were cut, but we were constantly... Mm -hmm rewriting his dialogue up until the day it was shot so uh yeah i don't think we shot i don't think we shot a lot that was cut out that i don't remember yeah all yeah yeah so he, I, he, I mean i i i know i know terence a little bit and um he is an amazing man he's an amazing man um uh, he's getting on a bit now uh, and, and when we were shooting that he was uh, that's when i got to know him and you know doing yoga with him hot yoga in, in, in the hotel <laughs> sauna was really quite an experience. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that, that, I mean, you know, and 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 with his, his wife, who one day will be twenty five, um, and and he was he was uh, he was you know he was brilliant, uh, Terence, and he is a fantastic actor, but he's also he's, he, he's once he conceives something, if it's not there, it's like hey. I had this. What, 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 what are you taking away from me? So I, I, I understand he was probably upset about things that he read of David's, which he really wanted to do, and then didn't get right. to do. We probably, mean, we, gave all... his, we probably gave his lines to uh, Nathaniel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I know there's some more B-roll. If anybody would like to look at that, it's on YouTube. Just type in the Haunted Mansion 2003 B-roll because there's some footage. The reason I'm showing this photo is Marsha on the right-hand side is in the ball gown outfit, and there's a longer take of Nathaniel carrying her up the stairs. And then there's oh another God. take of Karen Stamp um, uh, kind of taking Nathaniel away from her on the dance floor. So maybe just Do you know like, that was the most that. awful story connected to that? Oh, okay. It was it was a terribly bad story, wasn't it, Rob? It was terrible. Um, because it was my first day on set, and I was in this costume. And, I mean, Mona, obviously, brilliant costumes, already said this, but I, this was a fancy dress costume for Gracie. It, it was even fancy dress. So it wasn't quite fitting in the way. And, and I stretch a lot, right? I stretch when I'm trying to get into my costume. I just say I lounge around in my costumes. So I was stretching a lot in my costumes. And I go, boom, boom. I sort of, wow, wow. Yeah, let me and I went up this is on my first day filming right my first day filming on this big set with everybody there and and I uh, I went up to wonderful what, who, the makeup artist what was his name brilliant makeup artist I'm not being Michael White Rick who Baker. was hairdressing no, no not Rick um, it was uh, uh, yes oh god yes uh, I know who you're talking anyway, about anyway and he, he's a genius he's a genius um, anyway and I, I, I went boom and I did a stage punch like I'm doing into the lens now. And he went, oh, that was close. I said, don't worry, I've never hit anybody. Boom, boom. I did that. And I did a second punch. And I caught Michael White, our hairdresser, on the chin. Boom. This was on my first day. I was about to carry Marsha up the stairs. And, she, and, and I'd laid out the hairdresser. He was, uh, <laughs> and Don, Don, I heard Don say, oh, I've got to buy this man the house in the hills. <laughs> Um, oh, no. <laughs> it was. Do you remember this, Mona? It was just awful. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and he got up. Michael got up and said, "Oh, it's nothing. I've got brothers. Oh, honestly, it's fine. Uh, I'll be fine." <laughs> Poor guy. Spent the next, I don't know how long. I I broke all his teeth. Oh my god! Oh my god! What? You That's had to have a, something like fifty grand's worth of teeth placement, and it was all my fault. And Don covered it because of insurance, you know, injured at work, you know, the thing. And that was me. I injured him at work. I, 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 I was I was so sorry. I was so, but this is my first day and I had to try and impress. And so then I thought, well, I'll just carry Marsha up the stairs. I'll be brilliant. I'll do that. So I picked Marsha up. And as I walked up the stairs, I kept walking on her dress. So I sort of, okay, can we go again? <laughs> I oh, really no. couldn't make up. It was a, <laughs> it was my worst, worst first day on anything. I'd knock my head out, <laughs> and I couldn't even walk up. Wow! Oh, 
That's oh why on the second day, Nathaniel, they, they said, uh, stay away from Nathaniel. He's a bit of a loose cannon. Yeah, so, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I think I had a reputation from that. When, no, I mean, I love costume, oh, be careful. Yeah, yeah I, I took it a little too far. Oh, uh, well, here's another question. <laughs> well, here's another question from Sammy. She says, did any of the sets survive? Um, and did you know that the dining room chairs made it into the parks, which so coincidentally, the chair that the audio animatronic of Captain Jack Sparrow sits on is one of the chairs from the dining room table of Master Gracie, yes. which is crazy. <laughs> I, 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 did, no. I did know that. I did know that. And every time I go on the ride and, and see it, I, I give a little salute. Um, but I don't know that any of the other sets i don't know that if any of the other sets survived i know that uh when when the tiki bar was installed in my house and then i sold that house i actually took the tiki bar the whole thing and i put it in storage which i kept for at least 10 years in storage and then i pulled all of it out so i still have some of the uh pieces of the tiki bar but they are currently uninstalled okay I wondered where that red couch went. I, wasn't that from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yep. Yep. I'm sure that and, went back into the Disney props department. I, 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 yeah. I, I'm sure they didn't let it. It's probably no. all there. It's like, uh, you know, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, the giant warehouse with all the crates. It's, you know, it's somewhere. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yes. Somewhere out there. <laughs> top top Redford, men are in charge of that. And Robert Redford Here's had, Robert had Robert um, Johnson, his part. Oh, good photo. That's yeah. great. That's good. Look at Don. They must have had so much fun being in those zombie costumes. Like watching it as a kid, it was scary as anything. But watching it again, I'm like, oh my gosh, I actually would have loved to have played the the water zombies. Like that's that's a nightmare right there. <laughs> but it looked like it was fun. <laughs> you look so dapper, Rob. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's happened to me, but I was very Abbey Road. It was probably an outfit that Mona Mona picked out for me. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> there was a point in in my life when, right after doing Stuart Little too, um, and Mona said, "Have you ever thought about maybe adjusting your own wardrobe?" I was like, <laughs> "Well, gosh, Mona, what do you mean?" And she's like, "Well, I, I don't know. I just think, I just think maybe maybe you could use a little a little makeover, a little help in the." Uh, sartorial department and i said well gosh mona you want to go shopping and she's like yes as a matter of fact that's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> and so mona and i would would go shopping together and i would i would uh you know try on everything that mona thought would look good on me and then i would buy them too because you know that's what you got to do so i'm sure that outfit was something mona must have picked out quite right well she did well and uh and oh, yeah. so th this is what i was talking about in the theme parks at walt disney world this big blow up and Madame Leota is right in front of Magic Kingdom when we came in for the Halloween celebration. Wow. And I remember it scared me as a kid, but like looking at, I just found this picture. I was like, oh my God, thank God I didn't, like, I thought I was dreaming it, <laughs> but I found it, it really happened. So they had that set up. They had so many things. It was actually really wonderful. And then Don sent this picture from behind the scenes of the hitchhiking ghosts. He got to get his his photo with the hitchhiking ghosts, Fantastic. which everybody loved. He was great. <laughs> yeah. He was great, Don. He was such a great producer. Is, 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 yeah. Where's Don? What's he doing where's now? Don? What's he doing now? Rob, where's Don? Don is actually, he's watching this podcast. <laughs> is he? Is he? Oh, I don't know. He's actually the one. He's asking the questions. Oh, no, actually, I saw. I literally saw Don uh, last weekend. So uh, I don't know. He's he's still around. He's, well, like he I said, he created such a great atmosphere. Absolutely, Don is because uh, you know Don's a musician, and and you know he's a very kind of he he he's like a jazz musician. There's a very kind of specific temperament that someone that plays jazz has, and there you know he's just yeah. very cool. He's a cool guy. I don't yeah. know where Mona went. Um, I think her camera probably wasn't working, but I had another clip from behind the scenes of the costume work. I really wanted to play this. This is of the cemetery ghosts when you we exit the mansion. We're really trying to bring a kind of haunted elegance to the whole feel of the movie. And the costumes I think will be richly detailed and beautifully colored. 
The DP came to me, he told me about the scotch light, which re reflects light, but he brought it to me in powder form, which is glass beads. And we started experimenting with that. Uh, and through about four months of experimentation and d doing a lot of testing, we actually came up with a formula where you mixed it with paint. I'm painting the ghost costumes with this special treatment that makes them light up. It contains glass beads that glow when, when lit with a direct light source. So when you hold the flashlight next to your eye, the beads return light and the clothes light up. When you point a light directly at the costumes, we have special reflective paint that's sending the light right back to camera, which gives a really magical glow to it on film. What was his name, by the way? The guy with the... That's Jay Red. Jay Red was our... Yeah, name. Jay Red. Yeah, yeah, gosh. So lovely to see everybody again. It makes, I mean, it just really touches me. It's really great. Thank you, and Tony. Let's Good play idea. Some blue oh no, of course. Oh my God, are you kidding me? I just want to play some bloopers before we before we uh, exit out here. Um, so these are some behind the scenes. And I think one of the moments you mentioned with Eddie is kind of captured here. So here we go. I, I feel a scene being stolen. <laughs> 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 your grandpa had great taste in tchotchkes. I'm Jim Evers of Evers and Evers Real Estate. Charmed to make your acquaintance, sir. <laughs> Edward. Edward Gracie. You're my world, my life, my cheeseburger, everything. <laughs> hey, walk away. Let's go get a beer. The three corpse stooges. <laughs> they were great. <laughs> Oh dear. Hi Mona. We were, hey. we were we were just about to hey, close Mona. like we won't want to leave without you. <laughs> Thank you. I had the power went out in my house, so who knows? It's crazy oh, really? world right oh. now. Yeah. You missed a bit about your glass beads. <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, Tammy, so thank you so much for having us. Oh my yes. god, my pleasure. Thank you, Tammy. And so and just fun. one more question to go through the line here. What was what what is one word that you would say would sum up your experience about the Haunted Mansion? One word. Joy. It was a happy experience. Happy, happy. <laughs> and oh, that's, right. I would word? say, yeah, I would say it was a happy experience because of the, the culture set by Don and Rob. And it sort mm -hmm. of came from the top and Perfect. trickled down. And they really had a atmosphere that made everyone feel at home and they could do their best work. And it was really just uh, an amazing experience. So thanks again, Rob. Thanks again, Don, yeah, for wherever yeah. you are. I think the creative collaboration, something, David, you know, I mean, to me, that was just so much fun to have all these amazing people and Rob and Don and you guys, everybody just kind of, you know, communicating on every level and Nathaniel and the actors. I mean, it was just the best time. We just had a laugh all the time. It's great. That was a rich experience for me too, yeah. <clears throat> because it, it everything looked so expensive. And, and when I hear the score, it sounds expensive, but I mean, expensive in a good way, you know? Yeah. You don't see movies no, like for me, this it was anymore. My no. Rich. For me, it was total joy. I learned so much. I met so many amazing people and it gave me a chance to be as nat as I could be. Thank you. And I had a blast. I had so much fun with you at the at, at, at Rob's wedding. You were you were just so much fun. They were they were they both um, Mark and uh, Nat were my groomsmen. We and we got we, we got were? in trouble because we because we were we just couldn't stop giggling, you know. And and, and, we, and we weren't laughing at the wedding. We were just we were just silly, you know. Happy. We were just bloody your, happy. Your your business manager was hilarious, and <laughs> it just. God, it was, you know, I don't know, we had, we had so much fun. I can't explain this wedding, but it was the most spectacular 
setting and wedding you've ever been to. It was, yeah, it was. Incredible. Yeah, love to Kristen. Well, every, well, everybody, let's look at the camera. We're going to do a Kodak moment. So everybody give okay. your best buy on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you guys so much. This has been such a wonderful evening. I want to thank everybody in the chat room too, who submitted your questions and joined us for such a fun conversation. Um, please feel to free everybody. Almost everybody here is on social media on Twitter, Instagram. So I'll make sure I put their links in the show notes below. So you can go ahead and follow everybody here. Um, again, thank you guys so much for being a part of the show. And as they say, Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a joy. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, Tammy. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. All right. Anytime. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Thank you. Happy Halloween. Great to Happy see all of you. Great to see everybody. Yes. <laughs> Great to see you guys. Bye. 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 Join us, make your final arrangements now. We've been dying to have you. <laughs>